Meet Sue and Ian Povey and their 15 children. Sue's been pregnant for a total of 11 years and changed more than 50,000 nappies. Your idea of hell, not Sue's. She's still loving every minute. I just can't say that's the last one. I just can't say it. British average of 2.4 children per family may have dropped to an all-time low of 1.6, but Sue and Ian Povey are doing their best to get it back up. Always wanted a big family since I was little. Just wanted a large family all my life. Six, I thought, was large then. That's um, what you told me. Yeah. Loaned me into full sense of security. But, uh, I never believed that you'd have six, and I was right, wouldn't I? Mm. She got to six and then she carried on going. We're like, oh, she'll stop. She'll have one more and then she'll stop. And then she got to 12 and um, she was like, oh, I want one more. It just seems sort of natural. It's only when you sort of tell other people how many brothers and sisters, and they go, what? At school and everything, that I realised it was different. I just thought it was normal, you know, another baby every year. <laughs> it's just a regular thing. You wake up in the morning, you have your breakfast, you have a cup of tea. Mum, are you pregnant? And yes or no, and it's no. And that's more of a surprise than if she, she says yes. It's just sort of a nothing sort of thing now. Everyday occurrence. It's like catching the measles. No, we're not no. Catholic. She's unbelievable. She's just tremendous the way she brings them up. A, a real, true superwoman. I think he's a lovely man, very patient, laid back, dry sense of humour, and he's, he makes a good dad. Sue's never been longer than 18 months between pregnancies. I love being pregnant. I just float down the street. I've got a smile on my face for about three or four months. I don't have any morning sickness or anything like that at all. If only, if only she didn't like something about having children. Then we might have had 2.4, eh? Mm, no. Nah, we wouldn't be without that. No, of course not. Rebecca worries about absolutely everything, but she's got a heart of gold, really. Hannah, she's very good with the children. Very quick-tempered, isn't she? She certainly can be. Charlie? Noisy. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Giggly. Yeah. Every child that sort of comes along, we're just... It's just another dinner plate, another... It's not like a big thing. I mean, when people find out they're pregnant and everything, it's, it's a huge sort of change. And, and it's not here, it's just one, you know, sort of... Another plate, another... <laughs> another high chair, another... It goes on like that. Alex likes an argument. He wants to become a barrister, so he'd be all right there. Chris? <laughs> mm. 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 Chris. Chris. Chris is his own person. Michael, he's a nice boy. Helps me out. Matthew, a bit of a ladies' man. Likes to have a good appearance. Always looking in the mirror. Callum. He's a, a boy. He's a <laughs> likeable rogue, is our Callum. He's got a heart of gold, hasn't he? Yeah. He loves the little Somewhere ones, doesn't there. he? Thomas, he's quite a nice little boy. Sensitive, caring, yeah, yeah. helpful. Nice boy. Yeah. So well, we had three girls and thought we'd never get any boys. And we had six boys and thought we'd never have any more girls. And God knows how many more girls we've had since. Six. Katie, prima donna. Little madam. Likes to put her makeup on. Jessica. Bright and bubbly. Yeah. Full of life. Yeah. Bit of a scatterbrain. <laughs> Abby. Very sensitive. She's quite... She's a nice little girl. Yeah. Ellie. She's the one who pulls legs of spiders and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Emily. Very strong-minded. 
very prone to tantrums at the moment. And then there's Isabel, always smiling. Very, very good girl. I think that's it. Won't miss anyone? Miss anybody, no, I don't, I think, don't so. think so. No. Becky and Charlie have had babies of their own and flown the nest, which still leaves 15 family members living under the same roof. That's more than five times the national average of 2.4 people per household. Where do they put them all? Isabel's got her own nursery. Then there's Emily, Ellie, Abby, Jess and Kate sleep in the pink room. Hannah's got her own room upstairs as well. And then downstairs, Alex has got his own room, which was the garage. And then Thomas, Callum, Matthew, Michael and Christopher have the blue room. I think that's it. Mum and Dad sleep upstairs as well. Oh, yeah, me and you sleep upstairs. I do have my own room. I did have to wait quite a long time for it when I left university. I did spend quite a long time on a camp bed in the study until Charlie moved out and then I got my own room. <laughs> I used to have to share with Chris, Matt, Mike and Callum and Tom. We had all separate beds, obviously, but it's not that bad. But it's still... It gets to an age where you think that you don't really want to share with four other people anymore. It was OK until we got like to, like, to be teenagers and then you just needed your own space, your own privacy, and it was a bit too close for comfort there. We've got one bathroom. Ian and I have got an ensuite. Shower and then shower. go down to the toilet. All of which are very busy most of the time. It's no wonder the Povey household gets through three bars of soap, three tubes of toothpaste and two bottles of shampoo every week. Wrong. Yes, always. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go, Callum, Matthew, Michael, I'm Chris. Oh, Chris then, or I just have to say, what's your name? But I do. I don't know about you, do. Yeah, yeah you do as well. It. Yeah. I wonder if it'd be easy if you numbered them. Sue's own childhood was more solitary. I had a horrible, lonely childhood. My mum um, was an alcoholic. She was at the pub most nights leaving me on my own, so it was just me and my sister for a short while till she escaped and got married. My mum had cosmetic bottles and I used to... She used to have more different shapes and sizes and I used to line them up and they were my children. I never, ever could have a only sauce bottle. You had to have two or three sauce bottles, you know, with brothers and sisters. We were at a seaside and I was... My mum had left me on the beach and gone off to the pub and I was sat there all by myself and just left to entertain myself. And I looked around and there was families, mums and dads with two or three children, brothers and sisters playing together. And I was just sat there. And it was then I remember thinking, when I grow up, I'm gonna have a large family so none of my children would feel lonely like I'm feeling now. It's like my mum, you know, she couldn't live without her cigarettes and her booze and her alcohol. And she had to have it, her daily fix. And I suppose I'm the same. I've got to have my children and more children. And I'm not happy until I've got all the children and... Yeah. Sue escaped her loneliness 25 years ago when she met the unsuspecting Ian, future father of her 15 children. At my oh. sister's next-door neighbour's party. I had the records, so I was invited. You were the DJ of the evening, and I knew yeah. the person that lived next door to Sue's sister, so you we met by chance, party. didn't we? Yeah. It was love at first sight. To celebrate their silver wedding anniversary, the entire Povey clan has been invited to a tea party at Ian's parents. Just the 17 outfits to find, then. We tried to get them some new things of their own, but uh, on the practical side sometimes you just can't afford it, so hand me down they will wear. If they come home with holes in their shoes then they get priority, but if they want a new pair of shoes because they're 
you know, they're scrappy. Then they've well, got not to the wait. latest fashion or something like that. Yeah, the latest fashion. Wait, then yeah. they'll either have to go and do a paper round or um, wait. It's been We've chosen so to have a large family. That's the way it is, isn't it? If, no good moaning about it, no. is it? Children um, take priority and that's it. Um, we want something, we'll save up and wait for it. Smile. It's our anniversary. Just go to Labby. <laughs> <laughs> I usually invite them when there's been a birthday in the month, but we've had four birthdays this month and a wedding anniversary, so they've all it's all been covered with one visit. I think the very young ones that probably haven't seen my house. Because you can imagine you can't get them all over here anyway. And uh, you can imagine with my small house we you know, we put them in cupboards and <laughs> put, line them up outside, giving them a ticket, you know, it's your turn to come in. It got a bit embarrassing when it got to six, and as I say, seven, eight. It, oh, forget yeah, about it. I, uh, yeah, I don't think Ian, Ian was aware that uh, that sort of thing. Was, uh, Sue did say that she wanted six when they first got married. But when they got to six, they just kept going. <laughs> I don't think you could survive this mayhem and all the ups and downs that you have with it if you just, there's not a little bit of love and romance to bond it all together. Coming up, a typical day in the life of Britain's biggest brood. How on earth does Sue cope? Right. Are you listening to me? She's just get a tape recording, shouldn't I? <laughs> If you think a typical day with 2.4 kids is hard work, just imagine if you had 15. An average term time day in the Povey household means getting one baby up, 10 children off to school, and two more off to work. Yep, another early start for Sue and Ian. It's not long before the feeding frenzy begins, where the family devours two packets of cereal, six pints of milk, and an entire loaf of bread every single breakfast time. Daddy, I would like people. Uh, Mama, I like mum. No, Mama, I jam. 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 I like my mum. I don't think we've got much. I've got to go shopping. Jam. Can you wake the others up and tell them they're not having a breakfast till they've made the beds and tidied the room, please? I should just get a tape recording, shouldn't I? Not very tidy. They don't have any breakfast till all this is shifted. Shoes are supposed to go under the cupboard, not that's in here. Max. That's all Max. And he where's Matt? In the toilet. Yeah, Doing his hair. Wardrobe. So you're listening to me? Yeah. Look, all that stuff goes in the wardrobe. Yeah. Right, let's leave these boys to it. The children get themselves dressed in the morning. I'm not busy doing other things and they just just get on with it, basically. They become self-sufficient because they get they're there at the end of the line. Can't be bothered waiting, so they, they just copy and they learn. Bye then, everybody. See you later. 7.30 and Ian makes a getaway. Come on, Tom. Have you got everything you need? Yep. Pencils, oh, rubbers, it. rulers, pens. Ooh. Well, if you put them in the cupboard, in the boxes, you would find them, wouldn't you? Yes. Right, you've got everything? Yeah. OK. As much as I enjoy the family, it's nice to have a little break sometimes. Right, who wants lunch money? Me! What do you do about pocket money? Don't generally give them pocket money. To give them all pocket money would be too expensive. They don't get it for the sake of it. They might, no. we might give them something if they help do something that we yeah. ask them to do. It's a treat. But, uh... Well, they'll ask to clean the car, then we'll know, we know then that they want <laughs> some money. So they clean the car and they get a fiver or something like that. Where's Matt? Matt! Oh, he's putting my car seat in. I'll give him his in a minute. 
We've had to do a lot of uh, a lot of overtime in the past to, to support them. We had to work nights for several years to boost the income because of the cost of the, the family. But uh, they keep me poor, but keep me happy. With Chris, Michael, Matt and Callum off to secondary school, yeah, Sue does the school run with Jessica, Abby, Katie and Tom. Of course, she also has to take two little ones, the baby and a granddaughter, along for the ride. Come on, madam. This... Caitlin, come on. Yeah, come on. In the car. Katie, can you hold it a better minute because her seat's not straight? No, just stay there. Hold her, hold her tight. We had a minibus once, but the engine blew up. It's completely worn out. But we haven't really been able to afford another minibus at the moment, so we just get around with two cars. I have my Rover, and Ian has a Mini One. Fifteen children and a little Mini. Yes. <laughs> Love the school run. So for Ian, it's the relative calm of a busy office. Morning. Morning. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Dave. Ellie, don't go near the road, please. For Sue, it's business as usual. Everybody got their pat lunches, so I'm not coming back. Bye. Come on, Millie, you're not going to school. You're not going to school. Come on, this way. Say bye-bye. Yeah. Come on, this way. Caitlin, this way. Between school runs that just Come run and run and run, Sue's faced with a mountain of housework, including three hours of ironing and at least nine loads of washing a day. Sometimes it could be more when Alex sits tidied up his room or Hannah's tidied up their room, they come down with a couple of baskets and put them in with my usual wash and then it's about 11 or 12. I don't have a tumble dryer. I used to have a tumble dryer and it was in the garage at the time and one of my children put cement in the tumble dryer and turned it on. And that was the end of that. So we've made do. We haven't had one since. Okay, I just did the What are you wearing? <laughs> Go into the boys' room. Do you think in the boys' room? Can you see me? Yeah. Good. I never get bored with the, the mundane things, you know, I get up every day, I just enjoy it, I just throw myself into it, I just love it. Ian's day is slightly more peaceful. He's worked as a supply analyst for the same company for 30 years. But earning under £30,000 a year, it's not always easy to make ends meet. Well, we've had a few uh, 
lean times in in the past where we've had to count the hackneys as it were but unfortunately uh, now uh, things have sort of eased off a little bit uh, one or two older children working as well and helping pay the way things have, have got a little bit easier when we were younger it was i think it was more of a struggle i think now it's pretty good and we don't really notice and money's not a problem or anything. When we were younger, it was sort of like I'd have Becky's hand-me-downs and everything. But like I said, anything we wanted to do, we'd always be able to do it. It wasn't, you know, it was fine. <laughs> you have to sacrifice little things. And it's annoying if, if other people have got, got more than you, it's always going to be annoying. But then, well, again, I wouldn't change it. It's half past three and already time for another school run. Right. Right, you sit there. No, you sit in the seat. Move that bag out of the way. Get your bag off. Right. Move over. Oh. Yeah, now, there we go. Everybody's happy. Yep. Sit down, Ellie, please. Sit back. Get that belt on. Sit back and get the belt on. All right. And they're off, heading home for Sue's next chore. And then start doing the tea. We line them all up on the worktop, don't we? We have a little conveyor belt. Yeah. So like just like the school dinners. Yeah. Mostly it's chips. She cooks like beef burgers, chicken nuggets, fish fingers and um, fish cakes. It's usually the same routine like nuggets and pizzas one day, chips and whatever every day. We'll try to mix in the yeah. healthy eating with the pizza and chips, don't we? Fresh vegetables and stuff. Slip the odd proper meal in. In between, yeah. hope they don't notice. <laughs> I don't cater for fussy eaters. If they say they're vegetarian, we'll sympathise and say, oh yeah, right ho. But they have to have what is cooked for the whole family, otherwise they just have to go without. If I did food for anyone that didn't like it, I'd be there all day doing different foods and, and that. Hannah's at work. Alex is at work, and then we have tea together, don't we? Well, as near together as we can, and mm. we can all get round the table, so we all eat roughly yeah, about the same we, time. Yeah. But... At the table, don't ever leave your seat because somebody takes it. <laughs> Be warned, never take on a povey at a game of musical chairs. get much family allowance? I think it's just over about £100 a, a week, I think, that Sue gets. So it, it goes towards the, the weekly shopping bill, but doesn't cover it by any means. The weekly shop is so huge, Sue has to wait until the boys are home from school to help her. So how much food does it take to keep the Povey machine running in a typical week? Right, we have about 96 pints of milk a week, 30 eggs, 36 burgers, a huge sack of potatoes, we have two huge tubs of margarine, 14 to 16 loaves of bread, about 10 packets of cereal, 40 sausages, 4 or 5 packs of cheese a week, 36 toilet rolls, 160 tea bags, a huge jar of coffee. That's £188.82, please. Thank you.
It can be anything from 150 up to 200. That's just on the That's main That's just shop. on the main shop. And I can go out each evening and spend another 10, 20 pounds a night. There we go. Where do you want your teddy bear? No sooner is the fridge restocked than it's time for Sue to get the children up to bed. With 13 of them still living at home, it's yet another lengthy process. Give a kiss, Em. Give me a kiss. Mm. Have a nice sleep. And you? They're all pretty good once they go to bed, yeah. they go to sleep. So, fortunately, we don't have them waking up all night long. So we just get to bed and get woken up. We do get... We do get a good night's sleep, yeah. so I guess the secret has been how to have a good night's sleep in between all the mayhem of the mm. long day. Coming up, we see how Britain's busiest mum keeps all her children entertained during the school holidays. Mum, you little flat just puked all over me. During term time, Sue Povey runs her family of 15 children with almost military precision. But the start of the school holiday means a whole new battle plan. It takes me about two weeks to get used to everybody in the house all at once. But it's not too bad. I don't have to get up at six o'clock every morning to get them ready for school. And we, we're not governed by the time or the time. I look at the time, I've got to get them off to school. So we can be a bit more relaxed. If it's a rainy day, I have to try and think of things like colouring and get some colouring books for them. Just try and map my brains, keeping them all entertained. For the young ones, I can do so pastry for them yourself? and keep them occupied. That doesn't really cost an awful lot. Mum, I'm doing a model. Oh, Caitlin, how are you doing? Can we make some more of that? Oh, I'll go the other I try not to let them sit there and watch telly all day. It's sort of like a quiet time in our house. They just sit and relax for five minutes and watch telly. Huh? We're having a little bit of place here. Mum, you little brat just puked all over me. But in the summer, it's not too bad because they go over the park and they're quite happy with that. I just have to ask you, ask me, do you believe that there is a Loch Ness Monster? I believe that some of the sightings may have some basis, in fact. Oh, yeah. Oops. Did I do that? When they're at school, I can get on with my work during the day and it's nice and quiet and... During the holidays, I don't get much work done. If I go upstairs and do something, there's always somebody saying, Mum, he's been horrible to me, and I like, stop. So I don't get much housework done, but that's not, that's not a, the end of the world. Lots of activity going on. Doorbell going, door opening, door closing, kids in, have a cake out the back door. Then they leave the door open, and the little ones will get out. And I'll have to go and retrieve the little ones from the front if I can't watch them. Then I'll shut the front door and then the kids will escape out the back before I shut the front door. So by the end of the holidays, I've got a knack of shutting the front door and catching the little ones before I get to the back door, before they get out. I think I prefer the holidays, really, than the regimented school school days. The house is eerie when, it's, when there's no kids about. But when a boy's got six little sisters, sometimes enough is enough. I think they like to get out with their dad occasionally, escape from the girls, because they're a bit outnumbered at home, I think, at times. Chris, Matt, Callum and Tom have followed in Dad's footsteps down to the riverbank, where the budding fishermen enjoy nothing better than a bit of quality boys' time. We'd like to try and get out and uh, have a few days out on the riverbank or the lake. So they just get a bit of time to, to their dad, as it were. Rather than have to share me. Gives them a bit of space to themselves. It's 
better than being at home, this, because it's more quieter. Sometimes you have to make a conscious effort to consciously acknowledge them, them all and give them a little bit of time in a different ways. Take some of the fishing or take the girls to ballet. We would do different things with the different children. There's not really anyone that's left out. I mean, there's a couple of sometimes maybe are in a couple of scapegoats. Callum. But I mean, the attention's good or bad is across everyone. My mum's always managed to share her attention and affection around everyone. But even if she couldn't, we've got the brothers and sisters to do that. So. Katie will go to Hannah. Yeah. Or she'll not around. Or and Millie will go, go to, to Michael. Michael. And I think Abby goes to Christopher. And Ellie goes to Alex. So yeah, they, yeah. they've all got a, yeah. they've all got a, a, a sort of favourite. I think that they turn to. If they catch something, they enjoy it more. I think. But, uh, the sport's not that good today. We'd have to do the old parable, I think. Five loaves and three small fishes to feed our hungry mouths. And then we get enough to make a fish finger. Fifteen children means fifteen birthday celebrations and fifteen lots of presents to buy. Today it's Tom's eleventh birthday. It's just special occasions when we make the effort to all go out. Hire a minibus and take them all out together. Go down the seaside or to the local farm, farm or something like that. Mm. OK. Right, have we got everybody? Yeah. Becky, yeah. Hannah, yeah. Charlotte, yeah. Alex at work, Christopher, no Michael, yeah. Matthew. Tom's Hannah. treat is a trip to the farm. It's only a 20-minute drive away, but getting ready for the off Abby. takes twice as long. Abby. Yeah. Ellie. Yeah. Millie. Abby, yeah. Where's Millie? Tom. Millie. Bell Bell. Where's Bell Bell? What about Caitlin? Caitlin. Caitlin. Right, we've got everybody. Why well, have we got a spare seat then? I don't know, Alex. It's not here. Yeah, yeah there's 14 passengers. OK then. Right, yeah. right we're ready to roll. For most families, a day at the farm won't break the bank. When you're the Povey family, 17 entry fees plus a minibus hire sets you back a whopping 200 quid. negotiate group breaks where we can if we go somewhere like this. Most I mean, most places have family deals or we're getting up to nearly party deals. It's usually over 20, we're about 19 at the moment. So if you get your boots on, we can get in the party rates. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoy watching them, enjoying themselves. You get so much play. Looks on their faces when they're feeding the animals or doing something like this. Leave out the practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those aren't the only kids Sue has to feed. It's time for Tom's birthday tea. Then we all ought to sing happy birthday to Tom, don't you? Ready, steady, one, two, three. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Birthdays they get generally what they within bigger reason. Thing. Bigger thing like a bike or the girls want a pram or something like that. So then they we'll get, get that. birthdays rather yeah, than rather Christmas. Yeah, rather than Christmas. Oh, so you're going to cut the cake for us? Yeah. Christmas is, isn't big items. There are lots of little stocking fillers and, you know, smaller items. And I try and give everybody the same amount of presents so they don't feel left out. Who wants a bit of cake? And they've always tried their best for us and they sort of go out of their way at Christmas and everything just to 
but we, you know, they, the kids now, they don't miss out at all. We get quite a lot of presents from, when people ask us oh, how many presents do you get, they're quite surprised to find we do get quite a lot. I start, as soon as I can, buying Christmas presents for them, um, because it takes me all year to get enough. It's constant. It has been hard at times, because uh, we like to try and treat them as other people would like to treat their their children, and it's it's not always possible when you've got to spread your your money in in more directions. Mm. But uh, uh, the rewards totally out outnumber the yeah. the bad things. The end of the day, and it's time to round up the flock again. Abby's just there. Abby's over there. Right. Jess? Jess. Jess is just there. Kate. 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 Has run away. Michael. Thomas. Tom. There you have eyes in yeah, the front of your head, to, back of your head, side of your you're head. You're constantly looking around and counting them and think, oh, he's over there, he's over there, and um, she's Matthew. there. Matthew. Tom, can you come here? There. It's just constantly like that. You don't really relax and enjoy yourself because you are counting heads and... Making sure everyone's together. Do you ever lose them? We lost Jessie at the beach last year, didn't we? Yeah. And Ellie. And Ellie, yeah. Did we lose Emily? No, not Emily. Oh, yeah. Go away. Go away. That was just a day trip. After the break, we joined Sue and Ian bravely embarking on a whole summer holiday for 20. How much do you want? I'll get some change in a minute. All right. Pack the kitchen sink when you go on holiday. Then just imagine how much luggage Sue and Ian, their 15 children and two grandchildren, take on a trip to Devon. We like to go away for two weeks in, in a year, don't we? I like to year. try and get away. Yeah. We haven't been brave enough to try and go abroad anywhere, but no. we like to have a caravan holiday usually. We used to camp at one time, but it got a bit too much for them, so we, we treated ourselves to a bit of luxury, luxury in, in, a caravan. in a caravan. Make that four caravans, plus several weeks of planning, preparation and packing. About a month in advance, I have to write lists of what I need to take. Um, the suitcases are out two weeks before we go and I'm washing and ironing and bunging things in each case. Once the cases are packed, they're all lined up in the hall waiting for when we have a minibus to drive us off on holiday. I pack for everyone from the baby up to Christopher. Baby has her own case, and then I try and get all the girls in one big suitcase, and then all the boys in another big suitcase, and then Alex, Charlie, Hannah, and Becky all take their own. Just recently, we've had to hire a coach. We did have a, a minibus at one time, which was all right to. Well, we only had up. sort of 12 little ones, but then it blew up and we had more children. We couldn't fit them in with all the luggage anyway, so we found it just as easy to uh, charter a coach to get us down there. be Britain's biggest lose stop. Quite exciting for the children going on holiday to go away on the coach anyway. Mm. Get a few people look at us at the campsite when we turn mm. up and bundle out. All our 
our family and the and partners the and the grandchildren. <laughs> when the povers come, they come. <laughs> When the 20 strong party descends on the seaside holiday park, they soon settle into their fleet of caravans, with the six boys in one and the six little girls shared out between Ian, Sue and the eldest daughters. And then the fun and games can begin, though it costs poor old Ian a packet. They like to go to the shops, uh, they like to go to the amusement arcades. Um, they seem to be dishing out pans here, there and everywhere. And um, I think we spent over £100 last time we went into the arcades. The total could be up to about £3,000. And I have to save up all the year before, just putting the money away to make sure we've got enough to go paying for the caravans and the coach and spending money. I'll get some change. I'll get some change in a minute. All right. How much do you want? Quid. Come on, you're stopping the game. Wait a minute. I've got... No, we've got the change these now, haven't I? I'm just getting some change. How much do you need? Um, two pounds on the simulator. Wait a minute. That looked pretty chaotic. It yeah, certainly was. Organised chaos. And expensive. How much did you have to spend then? I don't know, but I haven't got much left. <laughs> A few coppers. That's about it. And I went in with. I don't know, I've, about 20 pounds? I changed three 20 pound notes, so that's 60 quid. That's like we, why we like sunny days on holidays, not yeah. rainy days, because the beach is a lot cheaper. Next stop, lunch. It's not often the Povies make it out for a meal, and when they do, it takes meticulous forward planning. We have to book in advance, otherwise we wouldn't get a seat altogether. You can't just walk in a pub. Ordering for the hungry hordes is no mean feat either. It's best if we all have the same, otherwise it just gets too confusing and someone will get, go, we have to go without because they've forgotten it. So, yeah, we have all the same. Much easier. Even on holiday, Sue and Ian don't have much time to relax. There's things to do, people to see. Oh, and just 15 kids to entertain. <laughs> Quite like coming on holiday. Yeah. Mind you, I think sometimes when we go back, we could do it in another holiday to get over it. For Sue and Ian, the huge responsibility of bringing up Britain's biggest brood is not a problem. But not everyone shares their enthusiasm. There have been one or two that have sort of I think we're irresponsible voiced. and selfish that we have a large family. But um, Ian goes out to work to support our large family. I stay at home to look after our large family. Four of our older children are all working, paying their taxes. And I look after two of my grandchildren, so we're self-sufficient. We're looking after our own. We don't have to ask outsiders for help. 
I mean, if we knocked on the neighbour's door and said, look after our children while we're going to the pub, that would be irresponsible. But we know we've chosen to have a large family and we're supporting our large family. We're paying for them and we're looking after them. There's always people saying that my mum's selfish for having so many children. I don't see how she can be selfish for wanting to share her love around a lot of, a lot of people. OK, <laughs> So Ian look after their children, they look after them very well. The children really need for nothing. Um, and so it's up to Sir and Ian what they do, and not anybody else. I'm allowed to say she's mad, but nobody else is. I want a puzzle. Well, I think the children have learned quite a good lesson in life when, they, when they're grown up. They're going to learn not to be selfish and be patient, and they know how to look after children and, and be tolerant. Um, I think that's going to be the pros and I just, just the cons. I don't, they, they don't think there's any cons in a large family. I can't think of anything. You get the odd comment, oh, your mum's a bit of a goer, isn't she, and stuff like that. <laughs> but... I wouldn't change it. I mean, it's my family. There's not anyone that I want to knock off and and make it smaller. There's just so much going on with them. The whole house is like on the move all the time, you know, but it's so organised. It's not chaos. I would, I would live in chaos. Well, I don't think I'd be living with them anyway if it was mine. I'd probably have left home. But do the children want big families of their own or have they been put off entirely? I'm not especially interested in a big family, just because it's too much work. I see how much work has to go into it and I just, I'm quite happy just to, to settle for a small one. I look like two or three. Two at the most. Ten will do fine. Probably the 2.4's children. <laughs> two at the most, I think. Then if I had two boys then I'd probably want the girl, so <laughs> I'm not going to have as many as my mum. No way. As to how many that will be, only time will tell. I think she said she wanted 20. I think that was her ambition. She, she will keep going until she cannot not have any more. And then we just have to sort of all support her after that. We'll have to buy her a kitten. It's going to be terrible when she thinks she's not going to have another baby. Not to have a baby in the house will be absolutely horrible not to hear a baby crying and not to have the children constantly shouting. You won't and... accept it, will you? No. Last time you was accusing me of having a sectomy, weren't you? Because <laughs> you had to wait more, a bit longer than six months to get pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she'll stop until nature makes her stop. She'll probably start encouraging her nice to have kids instead and take them off us. I just can't say that's the last one. I just can't say it. No.